Hello, people of the internet. I am Antoinette von Graan, and today we will be learning sitting at the feet of the king himself. Today's book review is On Writing, a Memoir of the Craft by Stephen King. This book is... I'm struggling to situate it in a genre exactly. It's obviously non-fiction, but it's somewhere between a self-help book on the craft of writing and an autobiography to Stephen King or about Stephen King because he definitely uses his experience and his life story laying out a lot of his relationships and um, his problems with substance abuse and things along the road and definitely melding that into the advice so it's a good blend of both so that if you are already a big fan of Stephen King you get to read his autobiography and if you want some advice it gives a very particular type of voice that is not often found in self-help books of this type. So speaking of the voice, this is not like a textbook. This is like a casual mentorship relationship that you develop with Stephen King. It tells about all his successes. You are reading this book because he is the great Stephen King who has sold and published thousands of novels but he's also that Stephen King who had a nailed pin to his bedroom wall on which he hung every single rejection slip he ever received and before his first book was published he had to get a longer nail so it's definitely a bit of both it takes the humility of thousands of failures and the success of <laughs> millions of copies sold and it melds it together into really just a nice read but don't be mistaken this book is not soft and fluffy it's not going to give you an easy way out writing is hard work and king is giving us tough love here there's no sidestepping the truth in order to become a good writer you have to be willing to fill your nail on against the wall with your failures you have to read a lot and write a lot that's the mantra of this book and it's tough on you it's it's not joking around it's not going to tell you oh if you're feeling really sad today take a day of self-care and take the day off I don't think this man understands anything about self-care he is disciplined and hard-working and he expects the same from you he's a tough teacher so what would my recommendation be for this hard truth about hard work and an autobiography and a guide and is it just a jumbled mess or does it do something special five stars i loved it and i would recommend it to anyone who has ever wanted to be a writer reread upon reread you slowly get that same feeling that you would from a mentorship sure he's not there to answer your exact questions but he gives you enough knowledge and every time you'll go over it you'll find something else to stick on to it, it really is a guidebook as well as an autobiography and that really makes you feel closer and almost like you can trust the advice he's giving even more because you know where it comes from you know the history behind it you know the reasoning behind it i would definitely recommend getting this book if you want a mentorship from the king himself Can't even spoil the non-fiction anyway spoilers this is definitely about how to be a writer and the mantra that King repeats over and over again is to be a good writer you have to read a lot and you have to write a lot and then from that he develops a lot of other tips hints rules but not stringent rules but rules that he follows or tactics or strategies he's developed and that he would urge you to employ and as I said tough love is the name of the game here and even though I think this book and the advice within it is infinitely valuable to young writers I don't agree with everything so I'm going to do four points in total and stagger them one I agree with one I disagree with 
um, just to give you an idea of the type of advice that goes that we learn in this book. The first point that I completely agree with is that reading a lot holds the key, keys to good writing. And this may seem self-evident for those of us who have wanted to write because of an inherent love of reading. Obviously, you've read 500 novels, so that, that birthed your love of writing and your need to write because you want to add to this already wonderful culture of reading. But there are some people who aren't like that. And I've heard many excuses in my time socializing with other writers. Oh, I don't want to write because then I'll lose my own voice. Honey, I'm sorry. If reading somebody else's work is going to make you lose your voice, you didn't have much of a voice to begin with. You need to find your identity among other writers and you need to see whether or not you agree that this voice works for this style. And your voice is not going to go away. It is in experiencing other things that you find yourself and it's the same for a voice. If you want a really strong voice, you need to test it. You need to hit it with a sledgehammer until it doesn't break anymore. Next, I don't have the time to read. I'm focusing all my attention on writing right now. And Stephen King says it himself, if you don't have time to read, then you don't have time to write. Reading is so important because it teaches you what you like and what you don't like. And you can learn from all the mistakes of all the previous writers and all the successes. You can read a story and say, I love this trope. Can, can I just have this everywhere? Or you can read a story and think, why did this plot line not go anywhere? So it's not, it's not reading casually. It's reading as a writer. Reading with the goal of analyzing and dissecting the craft and taking it apart and seeing what works and what didn't work. So it's a different type of reading, but it's, it's honing your skills. You can't go into any craft blindly. You won't try to blacksmith if you don't even know how to heat a forge. And you can't try to write if you haven't even read the genre. Then, a point I disagree with is kill all the adverbs. Snuff them out wherever you find them. Now, I really didn't like this advice because I'm a really wordy writer. I like not flowery prose, but definitely descriptive and longer form sentences. This just didn't work for me because I love some adverbs. And then in the same sentence or in the same paragraph, King mentions that he hates the word zest. Zest is one of my favorite words. It just, it does sound exciting, but shorter. I love zest. So we obviously disagree. And I have to say, just thinking about it now, comparing my voice to Stephen King's kind of gritty storytelling style, we're not the same writer. And that's okay, but I'm not killing off all my adverbs. Obviously, in line editing, you have to justify every word that's there. And at that point, I probably will cut some adverbs out. But, you know, Mr. King, I've read some of your novels. There are adverbs. So I think this is also the type of advice that maybe he wished he could follow himself. A gold standard that nobody is actually going to achieve. So in the end, I would say rather than killing the adverbs and snuffing them out outright, question them. Give them a chance. They're not that bad. Okay. And then there's another point I agree with. And that's the notion that you should write what you know. And this sounds like I can now only write a contemporary about a blonde girl who loves reading. And no, 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 no. Don't do self-inserts. That's not what I'm talking about. And that's not what he was talking about either. It's about taking elements from your everyday life. Interesting people, interesting cultures, cultural practices, interesting places, interesting everything. The world is an infinite wonder if you actually take the time to stop and look at it. And that's the type of write what you know that he's talking about. Take 
elements from your reality and twist them up and put them into your story. For example, if you have a fabulous grandmother and you just love her character and her personality and you think she would be a lot of fun in your drama, you know what? Take her, maybe do a race swap, maybe do a gender swap and think about how those different elements would affect her. How would a different world affect her? And then you have a really strong basis for a strong character because it's something you know and love and you know is realistic and can work. But it's also something that exists uniquely and completely in your novel and nowhere else. Stephen King relates writing to sculpting. And there's this famous quote of Michelangelo saying that he could look at a slab of marble and see the sculpture within and it was his job to carve it out. And that's how Stephen King feels about his writing. He feels like there's a story, he just has to delve it and put it on a paper. Yeah, I don't feel the same. My story is less sculpting out of marble and more sculpting out of clay, putting bits and pieces together and breaking off and rebuilding. He also has a very strict draft, wait three to six weeks, edit, publish. That's how he works. I have been writing on the same characters since the seventh grade and they've gone through so many iterations and so many rewrites. They're in the core more or less the same, but who they are and how they relate to each other and how the world looks, everything else has changed around them. And with every iteration, I'm happier. I just, I've never completed a single draft and yet I've started rewriting the story. I don't know how many times, at least 20 times. And it's only recently that I've really put in a lot of time and effort into it. And that just meant a lot of deconstruction and reconstruction because you reach a point in the story and then you, and then you realize this character doesn't have motivations anymore. And then you have to go back and look at what, what broke earlier to cause this. So yeah, I'm, I, I can't follow your process, Stephen King. And I know like he writes 2000 words every day. He sits in the morning and he does not stand up until those 2000 words are written. That is work ethic. That is also something that I can't necessarily employ in my own life. Not yet, at least. It is the dream. But <laughs> not everybody has time to just sit and write till 11 in the morning. And that's not to say that it's not an admirable goal to go for 2000 words. But I think the process of making art is different for every person. And this process may have worked for him, but I would just have written 10 useless stories by now, forcing myself to finish a draft that I'm no longer happy with. Because in the end, you somehow reach a point in the story and it's like something you've been working on for years and it's like, oh, shit, this is, this is actually bad. I did not realize this was the logical progression of where this was going to end up. I hate it. And should I keep writing on something I hate? No, I'm not going to. So sorry, Mr. King. Respectfully, I disagree. Okay, so this is a new thing I'm trying. I am going to do some retrospective voiceovers at the end of the video um, because I always have some more thoughts after editing that I wanted to put in here. And for this, I think to summarize the value of Stephen King's book is firstly, nothing comes to you for free everything takes hard work and then that you should put research and work into find figuring out the craft before you just start writing and this is part of write what you know as in if you want to write about a different cultural practice than your own research it get to know it before you write and then of course reading in your genre so that you know which tropes are common which tropes are overused and which tropes you actually like so then, just to set myself up for the next two videos, I am planning on doing them both related to this video. Friday, I'll bring out a video on reading prompts where I'm going to practice my writing. 
And then next week, Wednesday, I'm going to do some retrospective reviews to practice to read like a writer. So I'm going to go over some of the previous books I've reviewed and look at what bits of writing advice, what key elements we can take out of there and put inside our crafter's toolbox for writing. So in true Stephen King fashion, I'm going to continue to read a lot and then I'm Friday I will practice writing a lot. Ta-ta!